Hello and welcome. I'm Dr. Russell Barkley. I'm a clinical professor of psychiatry at the Medical University of South Carolina in Charleston, South Carolina. Before we begin this course, I'd like to share with you my sources of support for the previous year so that you have an opportunity to evaluate whether any potent conflict of interest exists in this presentation. Besides being retired from the University of Massachusetts Medical School, which I did in 2002, I've remained active in giving a number of lectures internationally on the subject of ADHD and related disorders. I also receive various product royalties from different publishing companies as well as seminar and continuing education companies. And of course you'll want to know that I do work for and consult with many of the pharmaceutical companies that have products in the ADHD marketplace. This particular course is going to focus on the nature of ADHD, its diagnosis, some of its demographic characteristics, and particularly its subtyping. Currently, we view ADHD as a developmental disorder in the development of two neuropsychological attributes or capacities. The first of these is a difficulty in hyperactive and impulsive behavior. This is a dimension that reflects problems with the development of motor and cognitive inhibition. This problem with inhibition is manifested in impaired verbal behavior such as in excessive speech or in interrupting other individuals. It's also manifested in difficulties with motor inhibition and this of course is seen in impulsive actions and gestures. But we also see problems with cognitive inhibition in that the individual engages in impulsive decision-making without due regard for the future consequences of their actions. This also leads them to steeply discount the nature and value of the future consequences and to have difficulties therefore with deferred gratification. That is to say that they have much more uh, a focus or fascination with immediate gratification, even small rewards over larger delayed consequences. Now, of course, this dimension of ADHD symptoms is also where we find the excessive motor movement of the individual, the hyperactivity, that is. And this is manifested in excessive fidgeting, squirming, running about, climbing, and touching objects in childhood. But this problem with motor movement is going to decrease markedly with age, such that by adolescence, and particularly by adulthood, it is no longer of diagnostic value. It will be the difficulties with executive functioning and self-regulation that are much more prominent in the adult and even in the adolescent with ADHD than is likely to be the case in childhood. Now we also see in ADHD a problem that is not emphasized in the current diagnostic and statistical manual, that is the dsm 4 uh, criteria for ADHD and that is a problem with emotional impulsiveness. But of course there has to be impulsive emotion here because emotion is welded to everything that we think, that we say, and that we do. And so if people with ADHD are more impulsive in these other domains then they almost by default have to be more impulsive in expressing their emotions. Now this is not a mood disorder and it's not an emotional disorder. Uh, ADHD individuals have rational moods and emotions. It's just that they're very impulsive in showing them, which is to say that their emotions are expressed in a more raw and unmoderated form and done so more quickly than would be seen in normal individuals. The emotion itself is fine. It's just that it hasn't undergone the top-down regulation of the emotional state that would be more characteristic of an individual of normal development or of greater maturity. That is, the executive aspects of con controlling emotion are where the problem resides, not in the emotion itself. Nevertheless, people with ADHD are going to express their emotions more quickly and in a less moderated form than other individuals. And this is going to be especially true for emotions such as impatience, low frustration tolerance, quickness to anger, and being easily prone to just emotional excitability or arousal. Now we also know that people with ADHD are going to have difficulties with regulating emotions once they're expressed. This is the second stage of emotion 
after the inhibition of emotion. Normal individuals downregulate and self-soothe their emotions and make them more socially acceptable and more consistent with their longer-term goals and welfare. This will be a stage of emotional control that people with ADHD also have difficulty with. So I emphasize this because it's not in the DSM-4, although it should be. Impulsive emotion has been part of ADHD since its discovery in 1798 by Alexander Crichton, and it has been part of our theorizing of ADHD ever since. But beginning in 1968, the impulsive emotions of ADHD and the poor regulation of emotion was removed in the first diagnostic criteria for ADHD in DSM-2, and it has ever since then been left out of our diagnostic criteria for ADHD. It is certainly my hope that in DSM-5 we will see a return of impulsive emotion as a central feature of ADHD back in the DSM diagnostic criteria.